Coach, ramp up in competition against Florida this weekend. How do you think your team has progressed through the non-conference slate to prepare for this test? Yeah, I think we've progressed well. I think uh, we've been able to, for the most part, um, stay healthy, which is always at the forefront of, of my mind is keeping your best, keeping every player healthy. We're, I mean, we're, we're missing a few guys, uh, especially in the bullpen. Uh, the injury to Chestnut stinks, uh, especially for him. Uh, but, you know, we, we've also been able to play a lot of guys. We've been able to get guys that are uh, battling for some positions that are still up for grabs, um, see what they can do. And uh, I feel like I feel like that's worked out well. And um, you know, our starting pitching between Prager, Jones, and, and Lampkin. Uh, obviously, Prager's been great. Uh, the other two guys, I think, are improving. And um, we're ready to go, you know. Uh, that, you know we'll, we'll see what, it, what that kind of success or lack thereof uh, leads to uh, as we get into these big, game, big weekends. With so many talented guys, both on the bench and in the bullpen, how difficult was it to cut this travel roster down to 20 minutes on the uh, it was difficult maybe for the one last couple spots. Uh, we'll travel some guys uh, to that won't be eligible to play just to uh, ha be able to work with them and have them maybe give, give that experience of, um, of being on a roster. But, but uh, position player-wise, it made itself pretty clear for the most part. Pitching-wise, um, it's going to rotate. You know, as long as we remain healthy, the first – the first eight to ten guys is pre is is pretty simple, um, and then the remainder of the guys will be the guys that we feel like a are pitching well, have earned it, uh, or b um, are the best matchup for who we're playing. Right, that that that, that could happen too. So, uh, the guys that aren't traveling, we're still going to need them to be ready because uh, they're going to have to pitch. If we use a lot of guys this weekend, we're going to need them to pitch a lot in the midweek games, and every single game counts. And and a guy that doesn't travel this weekend doesn't mean he can't get better. Hopefully that motivates him to, to continue to get better so he can be on the next travel list. What are you, uh, I guess, keeping your eye on as far as starting pitching for, you know, those guys to have the success they've had, you know, against an SEC lineup and just the SEC play in general moving forward as they have in the early night? Just got to keep filling up the strike zone. Can't get spooked. Um, the average uh, – uh, number of runs scored in an SEC game last year, according to Coach Max, was 10, 10 runs. Uh, that was the average by both teams. And the average or the lowest ERA, I think, in intra conference games last year in the SEC, SEC was over five, almost five and a half. And so for us to think that, I'd love to think we're going to set this record, but I, I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, so can you continue to fill up the strike zone when? A guy hits a double or a guy hits a homer. Can you get right back in the strike zone? Can you minimize damage? That's been the, that's really doesn't matter who you're playing. We let Rhode Island back in the game because we gave them free bases. Um, we won the game the other night because uh, Sam Houston State's guy you know scattered some balls and, and we we had competitive at bats and we drew some free walks and we walked into the the, the winning run. So don't give up free bases. Don't just don't do it. Just. If you get punched in the face with a double or a homer, just get right back in the strike zone because the odds are still in your favor. But it's a lot easier to say that than it is to do it, and it's a lot easier to do it um, maybe at home against a lesser team than it is, hey, going on the road in the SEC and in some environments, can you get right back in that strike zone? So that's, that's what I want to see out of Prager, Jones, and Lampkin, and then whoever we bring in from the bullpen. Has your defense been overshadowed a little bit by the offense and the pitching? You turned so many guys over on the dirt and the outfield. They're talented, and they were, you know, yep. besides Jace, they were starters elsewhere. But still, that that mix to get your defense. Yeah, that's a great point, uh, Ali. You know, replacing Hunter Haas and Trevor Werner on that left side is that's been that, that's that's a tough act to follow. Uh, and Ali's obviously been outstanding. Gavin learning a new position. He's never been. He's never really had a full time position. He's a, kind of been a master or jack of all trades, master of none in terms of he's high school shortstop. And then summer teams he's played. I've seen him play all three outfields, third base, shortstop, catch. Um, and so learning third base for him, uh, that's been a lot because that's a really tough position to play in college baseball when, with the bunt game and the way the balls are hit. So re, that's a great point. Uh, both you know, Caden, um, Travis, Jack Bell, 
Uh, Targotch, they've all played a solid second base. Caden played a really good second base the other day. Um, and we're developing at first base. I think the most underrated person that we lost was Jack Moss. Uh, and the reason I say that is I evaluate a first baseman's defense by the lack of throwing errors of the other infielders. And Jack saved a lot of throwing errors and picking them out of the dirt or moving around the base. And he was a lifelong first baseman. So Teddy Burton has been a lifelong infielder, you know, at other positions. So learning people think you can just st stick somebody over at first base. And that's just not, that's just not, that's not, you, 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 you get beat with a bad first baseman quick. And so Bender up learning that position, Burton learning that position. Uh, that's been big for our team. What do you know about uh, super talented, as always. Uh, you know, they have a very much likely Golden Spikes Award winner in uh, Caglione, the, the first baseman pitcher. Um, you know, they lost to one guy, I think, went in the first round last year, and the other one, either if he didn't go in the first, he went in the second. Their first two pitchers were really, really good. And so they're replacing those guys with Cade Fisher, who w was an outstanding pitcher for them out of the bullpen. Now he's in the rotation, and he's super talented. And then just a bunch of young really, really talented arms. So I think, I think Florida from a, there's as talented as they've ever been. Um, they run, they hit for power. They have great arms, both in the starting rotation and in the bullpen. They're just learning on the fly. And, and that means that on any given day, it can be amazing on any given day. It can be a little ugly. And I think they've had a little bit of both, but they've been the winningest program in this conference. Uh, I think they've been to like eight or nine super regionals in the last 10 years, plus a national title, plus played for a couple national titles. So um, they're, they're the program, honestly, we're, they're the program we're trying to emulate. They have homegrown players. They cherry pick the transfer portal just a little bit, um, and, but they have, have homegrown players that they just continue to run through there. And that's where we're trying to get. So this is a great, this would be a great opportunity for us to measure our, our team and our program against that level of play. With this uh, start that you've had in your conference, where is the conference level in comparison to past seasons headed into SEC <clears throat> like your team as a whole? Yeah, I think, I think obviously, you know, the record itself is going to give you confidence. But I think our guys, I don't, I don't think I know that our guys have, they don't take anything for granted. Um, I haven't for once felt like our guys didn't show up to play. You know, sometimes, when the, when the hits don't fall in or something negative happens, it would be easy to say, ah, oh, these guys are sleepwalking through it. Nobody's sleepwalking through anything. The game, the game catches up with you. That's what happens, the game itself. So um, our guys, that they, and how do I judge that? I judge by how they prepare. You know, what's batting practice like? What's the, how, when they're stretching, when they're playing, doing their catch play, are they going through the motions? Are they doing the things we do every day? And so just do what we do and there's we continue to do what we do. We're going to win some games. We're going to lose some games. Um, but if we stay healthy, uh, we'll be fine. <clears throat> what do you think, we talked about the pitching, but for especially the young guys in the lineup, uh, what do you think is going to be key for them to be able to not even handle necessarily the pressure, but I guess on the flip side, the positive, you know, starting rallies as we see college baseball all the time. Uh, kind of in a hostile environment. What's the key for them to kind of be able to apply that pressure for them? Uh, just yeah, just trust trust their training, trust what we do. We we spend as much money, effort, and time in the mental game of baseball as as any program, or more than any program in the country. From the first day of the fall, um, from the first day of the fall, we uh, constantly work on their mental routines and their ability to handle those moments and they have mental skills to go to just like they have physical skills to go to. And um, that's been proven this year in Globe Life. Uh, that, that, that was a very, it's not necessarily a tough environment to play in, but it's, it heightens your awareness and heart rate and, ex, and not anxiety, but you're excited, you know, and you gotta be able to handle the excitement of that, being in a big league park and the sounds and the visuals that come with that and then going to Texas, you know? Handling that, and I thought we handled that great. You got to handle even when you're playing at home and you're losing, uh, and you got to come back by from four runs in the seventh inning. So, I think we've been tested as much as as most people. Could we have played more road games? Maybe, yeah. But those games are coming, right? Anybody wants to talk about our schedule? Just take a look at the next ten weeks. Plus, you know, at Texas State, and I think maybe Sam Houston again. You know, Houston. So we our our, our schedule is going to challenge us a lot here in the, in the remaining 10 weeks of the season.
With facing two left-handed starters this weekend, what have you seen from your offense against left-handed pitching thus far, and what challenges do you think uh, that presents to the fly? Well, the fact that I don't think I've ever started a, uh, a lineup um, like this one where when they're healthy, you have three switch hitters. So that alone makes a big deal. Um, and then Jace has drastically improved from last year in terms of his ability to handle the left-handed pitchers. A good pitcher, whether he's left or right-handed, if he executes pitches, he's going to get you out. I mean, that's just simple. But, um, but yeah, I think our lineup balance is a strength. And that's why, you know, we spend so much time in recruiting and then also in developing the players so that we do have a lineup that is balanced and can handle, hopefully handle any scenario, whether it be a, a certain type of pitcher or how the wind's blowing, uh, a plain surface like Texas. Um, but I think we're, I think we're built to, to, to compete against a good lefty. Big win for AM as a whole. Uh, just one, uh, for, for, with Trev Albert, what, as part of the search committee, what did you learn, with, through what you learned about him there, what stood out to you about what kind of leader you think he can be? Uh, well, let me first say, uh, the, I already knew this, but the biggest thing I learned is Texas A&M is in the best possible hands you can possibly be with Mark Welsh, General Welsh. Um, and what I compare it to is this. During my time at TCU, we had a lot of success, and a lot of time the coaches get their credit for that. Myself, Gary Patterson, different people at TCU. The, the reason for success at TCU is the chancellor, a guy by the name of Victor Bashini, who – is on the backside of his career now, but he was the rock star that allowed the alignment to occur between the head of the university, the athletic director, the head football coach, and then everybody after that. And so in my experience, it has to start there. It doesn't matter. You could hire freaking Vince Lombardi and Joe Torre. If you don't have, if you don't have alignment in your leadership in any organization, it's, the organization is going to struggle and there's going to be weak spots and cracks that get exposed. And what I already knew, but what I was even more lucky enough to be a part of is watching General Welsh lead. And this guy had 680,000 employees at the Air Force Academy and I think like 12 or however many generals reported to him and he reported it to the President of the United States in the Pentagon. So I'm pretty sure he can handle running Texas A&M. Um, so that's the first thing. The second thing is that this is a business and this, this, this profession, this athletic director profession, it is a business job. It is becoming more of a business job and we all know what's coming, which is going to make it more of a business job. And so our job as a committee was to listen to General Welsh and here's what I'm looking for. Here's what we are looking for. And then work through all the candidates and then go to him with whether it be one or three or four uh, candidates that we felt like on any given day, any of these people would do a great job for A&M. And then it was his job to pick one and, and go, go recruit them and sign them up. And he did that. So I personally haven't had any contact with uh, Trev. Um, I've never met him, never had a conversation with him. I remember him as a player. Uh, I've obviously studied his career in the last week. Uh, I'm looking forward to meeting him you know, whenever he gets here. Okay. Yep.